Hi, welcome back. It's Fred in the shed, in the shack. Not in the shed today. Thought I'd muck about with radios. Oh, the weather's been absolutely terrible here in the UK. We've had rain and thunderstorms and it's late May. But today it looks like it's going to be semi-dry and I've got a little bit of time. So I thought I would play with this DR111. This I showed in the other video. This is a T2 LT style, 20 stroke 70 centimetre 446 PMR antenna. Uh, I had it a while, you can see it's gone a little bit pink because I used to have it set up above the shed in, in the garden. So we're going to set this up, we're going to take this outside in a moment and we're going to put it up as high as we can. And then we're going to go out and just do some testing with some radios and see what reception we get. It should be better than the Antron 99 because it's tuned to the right frequency. Going to use a couple of radios. Uh, firstly, a legal radio. We're going to use the Retives RB627. This is a dual bander. Half a watt, maximum power, fixed antenna. Perfectly UK legal radio. Nice little radio. And then just for a laugh, we'll compare it. We'll take it out. We'll use the Bofang UV5R. This is the original version. This isn't the Mark III, which is a tri-band, I believe. This is the original UV5R. Not a great test for performance because this radio is 4 watts. This radio is half a watt, so it's got a massive advantage. Of course, the only thing with the UV5R is that it's not a UK legal radio. It's not legal to use, it has too much power, and it has a removable antenna. But it'd be interesting to see how it compares. When it comes down to receiving the signal from these radios, I could use this VV898, two meter, 70 centimeter, ham radio transceiver. Also works on 446. Again, not UK legal too powerful but perfectly fine using it on the receive but i thought no we'll we'll make a change we'll use this little malahai or malahai i'm not sure which way around which one's the correct pronunciation i only read the original was malahai but these little chinese clones are malahai let me know in in the comments what you think because I, I, I could probably keep saying it wrong but anyway this will tune up to 446 megahertz the pmr band and yeah, we'll give that a go. And it's got a much better progressive power meter and also we'll be able to see the signal on the spectrum scope as well. So we'll set that up in the shed shack. Now, one thing that comes up with these radios, which confused a few people, is the privacy codes, the digital codes, which aren't really privacy codes. And I can demonstrate on these two radios. Now, these two radios are both tuned to PMR band. They're both on channel 10. If I key up on the Retivest, which has the privacy codes programmed into it and they're ready to go, if I key up the Bofong here, which has the privacy codes switched off, this is pure analog, it will still receive whatever you're transmitting. Let me demonstrate. So there you go, there's no privacy there at all. The only way you get privacy is if you've got two people using the same channel and the same privacy codes on PMR. For example, this Bofang, I'll now key up on the Bofang and you'll hear that there's no audio can be received on the RetiVest whilst it's set to its privacy codes. Here we go. There you go, did you see that? You do get the little light come on to say that it's detecting a signal, they are very close together, but the audio, completely blocked. So think of those codes really just for convenience. If you were on holiday, if you was at a park site, a campsite, something like that, if you've got two radios and they're tuned to the same privacy codes, it just stops other people butting into your conversation. It just blocks the other people's transmissions and it just makes life a little bit easier. But of course you can be received. Anyway, let's go out into the garden before it rains. Let's set up this uh, DR. Often on the videos, the guys will refer to T2LT antennas. And what they normally use to erect a T2LT is a telescopic fiberglass pole, a kite pole, which is Kenny. Kenny's interested in. This is my brook kite pole. This is an eight meter pole. Um, you get them bigger than this, that they go up, I think 11, 12, 13 meters, which is a hell of a height, but I've always found the eight meter one to be quite sufficient. To fix it in place, you get or you purchase an additional solid fiberglass spike and you simply hammer that into the ground and then up goes the pole with a T2LT on top. Well that's the idea. It's a little bit windy today. I hope it won't blow down and it'll probably rain but let's get this set up anyway.
Well, there you go, it's up. Eight metres doesn't sound a lot until you try and put it up. It's quite windy up there. And that's up at eight metres. There's the Antron in the background there. So it's not as high as the Antron, but certainly high enough. If you use this with CB, which I have done, you get out quite a good distance on this. Right, just need to connect up the other side to the Malahai SDR and we're ready to go. Well, a slight change of plan, it doesn't matter how hard I knock that solid fibreglass stake in the ground, it was just too windy. So we've gone back to the old umbrella stand, the cast iron stand that started it all. And yeah, and it's up there now. It is getting blown about a bit in the wind. But uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot more stable. What you can do is if you were going to leave this up all day, you get some insulation tape and you can just tape around the joins to stop it sliding down because with the movement of the wind, these can slide down on their own. But hopefully that will be okay. Right, now we can set up. Well, a little update. I just um, walked down the road to get some lunch and I took the Retivus radio and it struggled you know that antenna there um, the reception wasn't really good I had it on test so I'm thinking it's too close to the house it was blocking the signal so I'm gonna try and move it out a little bit see if I can get it onto the lawn give it a bit more of a chance but I was quite surprised that that didn't work so I'm hoping to rectify that well that wasn't very successful move the antenna but probably treated it a little bit too harshly and look at that it looks like a section has snapped so that's not too good so we've got to get it down now and have a look at the damage yeah as I suspected the high winds we had gusts quite high winds and it's snapped completely snapped the fiberglass there that's a bit disappointing and uh, I've lost the top two sections so yeah, a little disappointed with that. I'm gonna have to try and work something out now. Right, we're rolling again, but we've lost just over a meter on the top of the pole. I think that coil on that uh, antenna was just a little bit too strong for it. This is getting on, I've, I have had this quite a while. It's getting on a bit now. And Bella's watching with amusement, but yeah, okay. So that's maybe about seven meters now, just under. Up, but uh, it's up anyway, so we can get on with the second part of the testing. We're all set up, just going to test the audio. Yeah, testing or one, two, one, two, audio test, audio test. Because we're so close, massive splatter there right across the channels. But it's working, so <laughs> let's go for a little walk then and probably get wet. We're walking down the road and it's quite windy again, which I think is why that pole must have snapped. So, on these little PMR radios, if you use them in a built up area, they definitely don't go much further than about 700 metres, unless you can get them out in the open. So, I'm hoping to get a little bit further with that big antenna, but it is restricted. So not much point in going more than one kilometre. So the next test, I'll walk out to about 500 metres and uh, just check in. Well, at the 500 metre mark, so we're going to do a quick test. I mean, normally this is no problem for these little PMR radios. Let's see how we get on on the Retivis. Yeah, testing. Audio one, two. Audio check, 500 metres. Audio check, 500 metres. That's 500 metres on the Retivis. PMR radio, one, two, one, two, audio. Audio check on the UV5R, audio check, 500 metres. Audio check on the UV5R, audio check, 500 metres. Audio check, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. Audio. Right, let's push it a little bit further. 
So just walking back now, I'm going to come across the motorway bridge. We've done tests on here before with PMR radios. I think I think this is around about 800 meters or so as the crow flies. And yeah, they get back okay. So this will be a test for that two meter, 70 centimeter little T2LT. Because if it doesn't receive as well, um, I'll know that it isn't working as well as I'd hoped. But anyway, let's get on the top and give a shout. So very noisy up here on the motorway bridge, but as I say, I've checked this before. I know I can get back. Good test for just the equipment, see how it's working. So let's go on the ready vest first, half a watt here. Yeah, audio check, uh, one, two, one, two. Yeah, audio check on a UV5R, on the motorway bridge now, UV5R. Just walking back now and uh, my thoughts, I'm not sure this is going to be a great success, you know, this testing. Um, I thought we were disappointed when I went down to the shops. That isn't that far, but the reception really wasn't very good from that little 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna. So yeah, a little bit uh, pessimistic I must admit walking back, but we'll find out when we get the video uploaded. But yeah, not feeling all that hopeful at the moment, but hopefully I'm wrong. Back up in the shack. Now, if you watched that last bit I did on my phone walking back, I had a feeling this these radios weren't going to perform very well with that T2LT antenna. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm certainly disappointed with its performance. I just imagined by getting that little 2 meter 70 centimeter T2LT, by getting it up really high on a pole, I thought it would blow the, blow the things away. I thought it worked better than the Antron, because that was off frequency, the Antron, but no, the Antron received, <laughs> received a lot better. Really. And in fact, let's be honest about it, I've done testing from that motorway bridge, from a little PMR radio to PMR radio, and it's received a lot better than that antenna. So yeah, a bit of a foul. Well, big foul, really, and also snapped my pole as well. So, yeah, a bit of a disappointing afternoon of radio. But I suppose looking at it uh, on a positive note, unless you test your equipment in different circumstances, then you don't really know what you've got, do you? And I could have maybe taken that setup away on holiday untested, and I'd have been wasting my time entirely. So, yeah, a little disappointing, but... That's what it is. That's radio. That's what it's all about. I know that, that that doesn't that doesn't work. And well, cost me a pole, but that was my own fault for putting it up in high winds. It does say on the on the thing not to put it up above 20 miles an hour, and it was certainly getting up above 20 miles an hour. So there you go. A bit disappointing in this end. Uh, not the results that I wanted, but good good experimenting nevertheless. There's the old thumb from Fred. Please give it back to me down below. I'd appreciate that. Good for me, good for the channel, of course. And finally, just to say, please, 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 look after yourselves, stay safe, look after each other, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.